All right, so say tomorrow morning, you wake up, open up your closet, decide what you wanna wear, and you're met with these options. A blue shirt, a black shirt, or a green shirt. You might be thinking, well, that's not very many to choose from, but hang on. How many are there to choose from? Like, how many options do you actually have? If you're looking at me like I'm crazy for unironically asking you a question like this. Okay, fair. Maybe this one's actually pretty straightforward. Yeah, so three. But hear me out because what if we added some pants? Now, importance of putting on some kind of pants before going out in public aside, this actually introduces an important distinction to our question. If we now ask, well, how many options do I have to wear? It's no longer as right? Like we don't actually get an answer to our question simply by counting one, two, three, four, five. More specifically, we have to count the combos of shirts and pants together. Like we could wear the green shirt with the black pants or the blue shirt with the khaki pants, for example. But to figure this out in total, we have to do a little bit more. But Mr. G, we can still like list out all the possible outfits and tally them up. Like you would just start with the black pants we could wear green, we could wear blue, we could wear black with it. So that's three. Then like instead, if we chose the khaki pants, we could either just choose green or blue or black shirt. So that's another three, that's six. Okay, also fair. But, and hear me out again, what if instead of two pairs of pants and three shirts, we were a bit less minimalistic and had 2,684 pants and 1,357 shirts. How many outfits could you make then? Well, now you're probably thinking, yeah, but who on earth has that many pairs of pants anyways? Look, look, I don't know. It's not the most realistic example I've ever come up with, okay? But maybe it doesn't need to be quite that extreme to still become a more interesting to solve question. Like if we had a few more bits of clothes instead, for example, maybe you're choosing between 15 different shirts three pairs of pants, seven pairs of shoes, three different belts, five hats, or maybe no hat, and two jackets. How many possible outfits exist now? You could try listing them out like we did the previous examples, but that would take forever and certainly would not be fun. Zero out of 10, definitely don't recommend. But there are some things that we can do to compute the answers to questions like these that are much more efficient than just listing them out. As a quick aside before we get into it, do you see how very quickly a question like this can go from trivial to really interesting and really challenging? This is just the beginning too. Like we've only dipped our toes in a pool that goes much, much deeper with much more intriguing questions that actually have some really compelling solutions and require some pretty fascinating methods to solve. Let's start here though. A moment ago, we had three pants and two shirts and we counted them up by looking at all of the options for one pair of pants and then looking at all of the options for the other. Though we won't often literally list them out in this way, it is a really helpful framework to help us understand how to get to the answer to the bigger questions that would otherwise take much longer lists. One way that we can see this is to turn it into a decision tree. We can start with us at the top and then branch into two different paths for each of the two different pairs of pants and then branch that again even further to each of the three different types of shirts. Now, if we tallied up all of the branching paths, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, which as we saw before is the correct total number of outfits. We could also easily add an additional layer here for each additional article of clothing. For example, if we had two jackets, we could break down each of the previous branches into two additional branches, one for each jacket, and now that would give us a total of 12. As you might expect, this will also pretty quickly get out of hand. I mean, try adding seven shoes to each of these and tell me with a straight face that that's not gonna be too tedious to draw out. In practice, this still gets to be too much, but it's still a useful framework to help our understanding. Why? Well, let's go back to our initial problem. Let's think about how we set this up. We have one choice for pants, each with three options of shirts, and the other choice of pants, each with another three options. In other words, we have two groups of three. Two groups of three. Potentially that phrasing, groups of, is triggering something in your memory because groups of really just means multiplication. 
I'm thinking back to second or third grade here, when you probably looked at something like two plus two plus two plus two plus two, and realized that continuing to add those up one at a time would also get quite tedious after a while. But also realize that there are one, two, three, four, five groups of two, and five times two would also get us to the same value of 10. Anyways, all of that is to say is that means that we can use multiplication here to do our counting in these types of scenarios. In other words, if we're choosing between two pairs of pants and three shirts, our first category has two items, our second category has three, so we have two groups of three, or two times three, which gives eight total options. Sir, two times three is six, not eight. <laughs> right, just testing to make sure you are still paying attention. These six options match with what we counted when we listed them out before. And it doesn't stop there. When we add in two jackets, we now have two pants times three shirts times two jackets equal to 12 possible outfits. So even with three or more categories, we can still find the result by just multiplying. In fact, this concept is so fundamental that we call it the fundamental counting principle which states that the number of ways in which a series of things can occur is the product of the number of ways each thing can occur. So 15 shirts, three pants, seven pairs of shoes, three belts and five hats, or no hat, and two jackets, well, that's just 15 times three times seven times three times six times two, or 11,340. Not so tedious anymore. This also allows us to count all kinds of interesting phenomena. For example, how many different class schedules could you come up with if you had to take math, English, and history? And say there were three sections of math, five sections of English, and four sections of history. Well, three times five times four would give us 60 different schedules. If you took a test with five multiple choice questions that each had options A, B, C, D, and E, how many different ways could you answer assuming that you answered every question? Well, write out the five questions as each successive event, determine the number of options for each, in this case, five for all of them, and multiply it five times five times five times five times five times five, or more simply, five to the fifth, which equals 3,125. You might even start to ask questions like, how many phone numbers exist? Are there enough for everyone in the country? Well, let's look at seven digit numbers. We can treat choosing each number as a successive choice. And so we'll write out seven slots to represent each of those digits. In general, there are 10 digits, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So there will be 10 options, except for the first slot of our phone number, which per the rules of phone numbers, cannot be zero or one. Removing those two options from that slot leaves us with eight. Once again, multiplying these together gives us eight times 10, six times, or eight times 10 to the sixth, which equals eight million. That definitely wouldn't be enough even for everyone in most major cities, which is why we also have to use area codes. If we include the three digit area code, then how many phone numbers would that be? With the fundamental counting principle, you now have the tools to answer a question like that without having to list them all out. For such a straightforward operation as multiplication is, it is a really powerful tool in helping us solve all sorts of problems. And I would encourage you to think about other instances that you've come across where the questions of how many is curious to you and how many of those questions can be investigated using the fundamental counting principle. I hope you found this video helpful or at least curious. Let me know if you have any questions and have a great rest of your day.